Hello, dear listeners. I just realized that, uh, after recording this, that something's wrong with my mixer, and I could either try to fix my mixer and then completely re-record this, or I could just let you get an episode with the audio not quite as good as I would prefer it. It's not bad. It's just not great. So with apologies, here is the recording that did not use the proper microphone. I should be writing number 373. Today we're going to be talking about all of those pesky rules. Hi there. My name is Mer Lafferty, and you're listening to I Should Be Writing, the podcast for wannabe fiction writers. And I have a little bit of an announcement. If you haven't heard, my other podcast, which is more geared toward the business of writing for working writers, Ditch Diggers, has gotten a Hugo Award nomination. Or technically, we are finalists for the Hugo Award. There's a difference. And uh, Matt and I are completely and utterly thrilled. Did not expect this to happen. Wanted it, didn't expect it. And it's, it's been a dream of mine to win a Hugo Award my whole life. So, um, yeah, I'm, uh, thank you if you're listening and you nominated. Thank you so much. We are very happy to have your faith in us and um, hope we continue to deliver awesome stuff. But today, we're going to be talking about more crafty stuff, more focused toward beginners, because I had an epiphany. It's like I've completely forgot my normal uh, standard of doing his shows. Not like I've been doing this for 12 years. Um, What's going on with me is uh, not a lot to talk about. I have a... Oh, right. It was announced that there's a new Star Wars anthology coming out. It's for charity. It's for the 40th anniversary of Star Wars. I've got a little short story in it. I forget how much is public now, so I'm not going to say anything else about it, but I had a lot of fun writing it anyway. Working on book proposals and waiting to hear some news about stuff that I can't talk about. I got diagnosed with ADHD, which was really weird. Never been anything I've thought that I would have. Apparently, for those four little letters, it accompanies a great many symptoms and ways that your brain doesn't quite click well. And I always thought that ADHD was like either hyperactive children or an adult that I know has it is will bring up a subject that you were talking about two subjects ago when you're because he just thought of something he really needs to tell you. So that's how I interpreted it, but I found out Someone made a suggestion to me. I went to my GP and she sent me to a psychologist and found out that a lot of my problems with procrastination, starting new projects and not finishing them, and a variety of other things. I'm not going to go through the whole laundry list, but uh, are indicative of adult ADHD. Clearly I'm not hyperactive, but I've got some of the other stuff. So we're trying medication for that and haven't had any bad side effects yet which is good. The focus comes and goes. I think the biggest change for me is if I do get distracted and I go back to my work and I look at what I have to do, before I would get, I I would feel great guilt for letting myself be distracted and wasting time. And I would look at everything on my to-do list and not be able to prioritize what needed to be done and eventually just doom and dread and guilt would just kind of overwhelm me and I wouldn't get a lot done at all. And that emotion is pretty much gone. I don't, you know, if, if I get distracted or, or mess around or something, I don't do it for nearly as long. And when I come back, I'm like, okay, it's time to get back to work. And that is really, really happy making. Um, one last thing, I am working on an I Should Be Writing Archive wiki. I finally got the archive up to date for um, Patreon supporters. If you give at a dollar a month, you can have access to 12 years of podcasts. I'm missing four episodes, so if you are a digital pack rat, I would be happy to send you a signed book or a postcard or something neat um, if you can find the episodes for me. Okay, I'm missing shows 125, 180, 205 and 252. Which, you know, for over almost 400 episodes, actually it's over 400 episodes considering I did some special episodes. Uh, That's not too bad. What is that, a 1% loss? 
Anyway, um, so if you happen to have a pass I should be writing, let me know. Okay, so I was, um, I was reading a new book and I kind of got, a, I kind of got an epiphany. And the new book is called Nabokov's Favorite Color Was Mauve. 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 It's mauve. And the statistician took his mathematical analytical mind and applied it to literature. And it opens with this great story about how there are 15 Federalist papers that both Alexander Hamilton and James Madison claim to have written. And no one could figure it out. No literary person could figure it out. And then a statistician, a couple of statisticians went through and started use, looking at the words that they used and their ways of, of forming sentences. And they figured out that, uh, I believe Madison wrote all 15 that Hamilton claimed he wrote. But the point was is that it, it was statisticians instead of historians who figured it out. And so it's a mathematical look at a variety of literature topics. And as I was reading the one about adverbs, I started to really understand writing a little bit more because they took a bunch of authors who said, you know, never use adverbs. If you use adverbs, you'll die. And they went through and looked at all the adverbs they'd used. Usually just the L-Y adverbs. There are many other things that are adverbs that we don't think of as adverbs. And the more lasting and literary we think of a work, the fewer adverbs they did use. And he says, do I think you can go through and kill all your adverbs and suddenly you're Hemingway? No. But this is indicative of if you take care to form your sentences without the adverb, then you're paying more attention to your writing. You know, it, it's, it's like when you... I had this feeling with Lego Batman. Lego Batman had so many... had a lot of female characters. But I had one female character who didn't even show up. And I loved that. Because, you know, first, first the problem is there are no women. And so then people, like, throw a token woman in. And then we're like, look at your background. There are no other women existing in this world. She's not talking to anybody. Any other women. You need spear carriers. You need clerks. You need all sorts of people who are not dudes in your world. Unless your world is entirely dudes. In Lego Batman, when Batman goes to the Phantom Zone, little guard Lego Brick comes up to him. And it's a woman. And she's talking to him. It's Ellie Kemper from The Office and Kimmy Schmidt. And there's one point where she says, if my boss finds, something about her boss, if, if the, my boss finds out, she'll be really mad. And I'm like, someone made an effort to make that character a female. Because boss is almost always considered male if you don't say any more information about them. And we're in a uh, Lego type superhero world which more people are going to assume need more boys but this one character doesn't even show up I mean how, how much more background can you get than not even being there is a woman and the rest of the movie was pretty tight it was really a fun movie and but it was good it was it was a good tightly plotted thing and my, my point is is that is the is the movie good because they throw in Ellie Kemper and her mysterious female boss? No. But the fact that they paid attention to that scene means they paid attention to other scenes to make sure that the writing clicked. So, no, you can't just, like, change a gender or strip an adverb and it's all fixed. It's the act of doing um, 
paying attention to those things, paying attention to these rules that we always say you should follow, except you don't have to follow, except you should. If you pay attention to those things, you'll catch other stuff. It's like they haven't, they really haven't figured out why people who um, eat breakfast are usually better at keeping weight off. First they thought it was like metabolism or eating breakfast means you don't gorge yourself at lunch on bad stuff or whatever. And now they're kind of thinking maybe it's just the kind of people who take care to have breakfast are the kind of people who are going to take care to eat well the rest of the day. So is it is it a, a symptom or a cause with this? But their 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 thinking is if you think if you pay attention to that part of your day, you're going to pay attention to other parts of your day. So if you pay attention to following these writing rules, you'll pay attention to the rest of your uh, manuscript. And the book says, you know, Hemingway and King and Rowling. Or not they didn't mention Rowling because Rowling does so many adverbs. But uh, uh, they mention E. L. James. They all did use adverbs, just not a lot. So the same goes for like passive voice. If you go through and you're careful enough to strip out the passive voice, you're, you're probably going to spot other things. Show don't tell is another rule that can be paying attention to that can make you make the, the, the book better. I gotta say that I just read a book. It was interesting and it was engrossing and it was horrifying and it exhibited a lot of emotions in me. And um, but there were two things wrong with it. The ending sucked. The ending just did. It's like the last sentence was, "Is that it? Are you kidding me?" Um, apparently, John Scalzi's new book ends like this, but I'm not talking about that. Um, because I, I complain, I did a subtweet about the book on Twitter, and Scalzi immediately responded with "sorry." Another thing they did was, I think she went far, far too much into the showing, not telling. Because I got so much detail about how the character ate an M and M, and it just went on from there. I, I knew that. At one point when they were butchering animals, I was actually lost at the time. It was one of those things where my GPS took me to this office park. And it's like, you've arrived! And you look and every single building looks identical. And you have to make sure you get close enough to read the signs. And I'm not listening to the audiobook at all. And, I, and that's good because I know they're talking at extreme detail about butchering an animal. And... I was fine with missing that, but I think she went too far into the showing and could have stepped back and did the telling. I mean, you don't want to talk about how someone walks across the carpet, reaches out their hand, grasps the doorknob, turns the doorknob, pulls the door. That's all showing, not telling. But if I went, you know, if I just would like to get to the next scene, I can say they left the room. So. The rules are there for a reason, and yes, you need to learn the rules. You can break the rules, I'm trying to say. You can break the rules, but you need you can't just flippantly break the rules, willy-nilly. You can't just run around throwing as many adverbs as you want just because the man can't tell you what to do. You're going to publish on Amazon. But when you choose your words, when you choose your adverbs, when you choose your passive voice, make it a conscious choice. Make sure that that sentence says exactly what you want it to. And then you will likely be better off having a stronger story overall. And I guess that's everything that I want to say. I'll be bringing interviews back next month. But for now, we're just going to be you and me, a little bit, a little bit of talking, a little bit of intimacy. And let me get my feet back under me. I think things are going to get better now that I am figuring out what's wrong with my brain fog. And I'll be talking about more basics in the coming episodes because I, I want to return to the basics a little bit. And this was the basics on writing rules. Why they're important, what they mean, and when it's okay to break them. 
want to remind you that I have a Patreon, and your money to that helps me and Matt for Ditch Diggers, um, you know, keep our equipment up, do some traveling to conventions, um, and just helps keep us going. And you can get anything from uh, access to the I Should Be Writing archives, which include the Ditch Diggers archives too, and to um, I will sit down with a bottle of wine and annotate one of my books to you, putting notes in the margins about whatever strikes my fancy, but often about why I chose what I chose, if there's a little nod or a hint about something in the book, um, or whatever. It, 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 it's something I did to a friend of mine's book one day when we were, he asked me to sign it, and I'd had a glass of wine, so I got another glass of wine and started signing and didn't stop for a while. So it was so much fun to do, I figured I would offer it up. So, um, and in between, you can have uh, hangout status at cons and critiques and one-on-one -on -one hangouts to talk about your writing and stuff like that. So I think it's kind of cool. I'm happy with it. But check it out. It's patreon.com slash Um It's weird because you, they don't really have Patreon set up to help out an author, a, a freelancer with many different streams of revenue. So I have to have one Patreon for my two podcasts and my writing. Oh, I did send out a the first chapter of Six Weeks 2, which is, you know, not finished, and it's not even sold. So, if the book doesn't sell, then only the people who follow the Patreon will know what I had intended. But they all got the first two chapters of the book um, in Patreon. So, or at least at, at certain levels. So check it out. It, it helps me. It helps Matt. It helps the podcast. And even at just a dollar a month, if everybody who downloaded this gave me a dollar a month, I would be set. Boy, I could podcast every day, man. Anyway, if you want to email me, write me at mightymur at gmail.com. And you can see the blog and show notes at merverse.com slash blog. Remember, if you are a Hugo voter, please consider Ditch Diggers for your nomination for, or your vote for FanCast. And if you are going to Helsinki, to the Worldcon this year, be sure to look me up. I'll be there. Matt, unfortunately, will not. But I will be there to represent Ditch Diggers and to get interviews and talk to people and be in Finland and stuff. And I'm so excited I can't even breathe. Okay, I just breathed. So, that is it for today. I hope you got something out of the discussion about writing rules and essentials and why you should follow them. And I'll talk to you next time. And until then, you should be writing.